Hello guys, welcome. So I am continuing my Robbie Williams album journey and we are officially on album number two. I've been expecting you. Hi guys, interrupting myself just to say, if you'd like to see this video completely uncut, you can do so on my Patreon. The link is in the description. We're gonna get right into it. First track is strong. Well, let's hope strong is a strong track. How relatable. Oprah Winfrey, Ricky Lake, teach me things I don't need to know. I honestly love when Robbie makes pop culture references. Usually I'm on the fence about pop culture references because sometimes they cause the song to not age well. But every time Robbie's done it, I've felt like it was intentional. He's painting a picture of what's going on in his life at this time, so... Yeah, hello again, guys. Sorry for the weird cut. It's the next day. I got interrupted just as I started filming yesterday, so that was fun and inconvenient. But let's continue. Let's continue. And it started to show, so I'm old, this opening has such a similar feel to Lazy Days. I have to wonder if that was intentional. You know, another similarity that I'm noticing is the song is also very straightforward, like Lazy Days. So, <laughs> I'm expecting some of the sarcasm to kick in fairly quickly afterwards. That is a song I'm sure at least 95% of us can relate to in some way, shape, or form. And I'm seeing that the next track is No Regrets, which is currently one of my favorite Robbie tracks ever. So, maybe there is a shift in tone here at the beginning of the album. Life Through Lens was riddled with sarcasm, and I'm sure there's some of that to come later in the album because, again, it's Robbie. But No Regrets is also a very straightforward song. And on that note, let's get into it. Also one of my favorite music videos of his. Drums on this track are spectacular. No now. Uh, there are the goosebumps. And I've already heard this song. I know from the outside. Still gets me. If I could just stop oh my gosh, I swear those background vocals sound like they're being sung by Neil from Pet Shop Boy. <laughs> Well, shit. That is an iconic outro if you ask me. What surprises me about that song is that this album was released in 1998, and if I didn't know any better, I would have thought No Regrets was released on one of his albums in the early 2000s, because it's so maturely written, and 1998 was just a few years after all of that went down. So I'm just shocked by the maturity he expressed and how eloquently he was able to share his thoughts regarding what happened. He made it very clear that he was hurt, but he shared that without being evil. All right, next up, Millennium, which I have of course reacted to. And actually, now starts the sarcasm. <laughs> Oh, aren't we all falling from grace? Why was that bridge 
my favorite part of the song. Robbie and Guy are the dream team. You guys should know by now I love Sentimental Robbie with all my heart, but I also love when he goes full pop star to basically roast being a pop star and celebrity culture in general, and also those who engage with it. But I do feel like part of him also loves it. It's just as entertaining for him as it is for us. Obviously, not the darker side of things, but yeah, I'm going to stop there because I could spend an hour talking about this whole topic. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack with that song, but still love it. All right, Phoenix from the Flames. Already noticing sonically, he's playing with a lot more different types of well instrumentation, but also styles. Already sensing some growth. Am I hearing a choir in the background? I think I am. I think those two sustained belts from Robbie there at the end add another five years onto my lifespan because he is so good at holding high notes and that's something i didn't realize until i watched his swing concert from royal albert hall and i just checked genius they actually had a quote from robbie regarding the song and he apparently wrote it for his sister i had a feeling it was written with someone specific in mind once i was able to pick up on the fact that he wasn't talking about something romantic i thought it would be either a family member or a friend and he also described it as a bit of a sequel to Angels, and I definitely got those vibes. It's kind of funny how Phoenix from the Flames is a more aggressive song sonically compared to Strong, but lyrically, it's a lot more positive than Strong. <laughs> of course, they're both uplifting songs respectively, but you get what I'm saying. All right, win some, lose some. Okay, already loving how this sounds. Bobby's falsetto is so underrated in my opinion. That bridge was top tier. I am so looking forward to watching a live performance of this one. That song has the potential to be one of my top tracks by the end of this listen. And it had a lot to do with the instrumentation. First of all, the song was bass heavy. Second of all, loved what Robbie did vocally. He was harmonizing with himself almost the entire time, and I loved the textures his harmonies added. And it was very catchy melodically. But yeah, lyrically, seems like he was reflecting on a relationship he got into when he was younger. And the phrase, you win some, you lose some, just makes me feel like he's brushing it off. Not in an angry way, though. In an, oh well, kind of way, if that makes sense. All right, next up, Grace. Ooh, that's a lyric. I try to listen hard to what my conscience says. Give them more.
That is so pretty. Also, the drums switching up makes such a huge difference. Okay, so unless Grace is a person or a representation of a person, it seemed to me like he was personifying Grace itself. In other words, sharing with us that he's on a journey to becoming a better version of himself and he just needs a little grace and a little time to make that happen. I really think he wanted to emphasize that he was actively trying. There were a lot of fun things happening with that track musically, but I especially loved how much the drums changed. And now that I'm thinking about it, the drums going half time and back really didn't change the mood of the song, but more so the feel of the song. All right, next up, it's only us. <laughs> So my favorite part of It's Only Us would have to be the instrumentation. I do think I'd prefer hearing it live. I didn't dislike the song. I actually enjoyed listening to it. I didn't connect with it as much as the previous tracks, but I definitely would not skip it listening all the way through the album. And lyrically, he brought the sarcasm back. That to me felt like another track where he was reflecting on some of the less than great decisions he made when he was younger, and of course I could be a little off, but that's how I interpreted it on my initial listen. Next up, Heaven From Here. We love, and I just want to hold you near. No, no fear. We will see heaven from here. Well, okay, I did not expect to get a full-blown love song from Robbie, after It's Only Us, I mean, but a pleasant surprise. But at this point, I'm just not as in love with it as some of the earlier songs from this album. All right, Karma Killer. Well, I already know who this song is about. <laughs> now I finally get to hear it, and I'm ready. Those strings. Why was I never good enough? Thought you leave me falling forever. Na 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 na. I hope you chill on your Bacardi and Coke. Come and kill us.
I'm gonna need a few business days to recover from that last note. <laughs> you know, I thought Morton Harkett from AHA had the longest note held in a song with Summer Moved On, but I feel like that note Robbie just held at the end of Karma Killer has to be up there. I mean, Robbie held onto that note for dear life. It was so long that Nigel could have went and gotten another facelift before he was done with the note. The instrumentation was incredible, especially those strings. I felt like I was in the middle of an action movie, and now I'm wishing he did an action movie themed music video for it. <laughs> Definitely one of the most cinematic songs I've heard from him. All right, next up, She's the One, which I have of course heard and react it to. So funny to hear him singing so delicately after Karma Killer. <laughs> My goodness, is that a gorgeous harmony. She's the one. To be honest, I feel like I have not appreciated that song as much as I should have. <laughs> but that's just because I've been distracted by some of Robbie's other masterpieces. I'm not at all surprised by that song being the biggest hit from the album. At least that's what I'm seeing based on the streaming numbers. Doesn't surprise me because it's very catchy and I love how understated it is vocally. He sounded very vulnerable there, which has been a trend throughout some of these tracks. And because his vocal was so understated throughout the song, I feel like that allowed the instrumentation to explode for lack of a better term. <laughs> All right, Man Machine. Oh, don't do that. Oh boy, the instrumentation is probably my favorite part of this track so far. So I just looked over the lyrics to Man Machine to get a better idea of what he was singing about. I feel like that track is an anthem for anyone who's had to deal with a pretentious asshole. I really appreciated his confidence on that track, and Man Machine overall is another track that's not one of my favorites on my initial listen, but I wouldn't skip it and I did enjoy listening to it. Now we are on to the last stretch of tracks. We have These Dreams with the hidden tracks Stand Your Ground and Stalker's Day Off. Before you get into it, let's take a moment to acknowledge the gorgeousness that is that portrait of Nude Robbie, and on that note. He gets a kick out of losing the plot, so it seems. He makes you all laugh, so she's the one to. She's not the one under his own These dreams have let you down Take a 
Oh, just keep it going. Go ahead and add these dreams to my list of favorites from this album. Honestly, I just loved how dramatic that song sounded. There were parts of it that made me feel like I was watching a period drama, <laughs> but obviously that was not the case. I also enjoyed it lyrically from what I was able to pick up on. It seems like he was narrating the story of a couple whose relationship didn't work out, but he's specifically coming to the woman's defense and comforting her because it seems like she had a lot of nonsense to put up with. And I don't know if that song is actually about an experience Robbie had, but either way, beautifully written and performed. All right, next up, Stand Your Ground. I am feeling the goosebumps come back. Oh, I am heartbroken. But also not, because... I, I didn't mind the length of that track. He said what he needed to say. That was it. You know, funnily enough, Stand Your Ground is like the perfect follow-up to these dreams. But I don't get the feeling it was intended to be that way. I could be wrong, but to me, Stand Your Ground represents so much more. I feel like anyone who's going through any sort of rough time can relate to that song lyrically. And I'm wondering if the song being so atmospheric was intentional because he wanted it to be comforting. If I'm right about that, he nailed it. All right, lastly, Stalker's Day Off. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, sweetie, you sound delusional with me. and in need of medication. I know you have doubts. I've seen misery and have a strange empathy. Why does Robbie play this character so well? I love you too, and uh, perhaps one day we could meet face to face this time. Nope. I'm sorry about the letter I sent you. The newspaper curtains and stuff. And, and blood. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No. That track was hilarious. And I'm not at all surprised that Robbie would write something like that. Love the voice messages in the background as well. It's the fine details, people. It's the fine details that make all the difference. As I've said many times before, I really wish there was a music video for Stalker's Day Off just to see Robbie go all out because I know he would have committed to that character. <laughs> what an incredible sophomore album. I think the thing that stood out to me the most was the growth sonically and vocally. He sounded so much more confident on these songs and the writing also improved, but again, you know, <laughs> this is Robbie and Guy. Super excited to hear a lot of these tracks live, so I'll be looking out for them as I continue my way through his live shows. And now I get into my favorites. So we have Strong, No Regrets, Millennium, Phoenix from the Flames, Win Some, Lose Some, Grace, Karma Killer, She's the One, and These Days. But I'd also include Stand Your Ground and Stalker's Day Off. I loved both of those hidden tracks. And if I had to pick a top three, ooh, okay. No regrets, 
Win some, lose some. Karma killer. Yes, current top three. Guys, let me know your top three and your overall thoughts on the album. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.